Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist and welcome to our next little mini webinar in our series Scribner for the Family History Writer. Today we're going to take a look at the cork board in Scribner. Now the cork board is a basically a visual tool. It's a place for us to outline, brainstorm our ideas, storyboard, mind map, wh whatever phrase you, you want to use to describe it. This is the place where you're going to put those ideas down and develop them, whether that is into a family history book, whether it's into blog posts, whether it's into your progen writing project or magazine articles. This is the place that you're going to be able to be inspired uh, to start writing. And like I said, it's a visual tool, so it's very inspirational and motivational and therefore um, the visual aspect of it is in extremely important to your own creative style. So I want to show you how you can make this very specific to your own particular taste. So let's first look at how we access the, um, the cork board here. Um, quite simply, we access our cork board through view up here. You can see I have it clicked. If I unclick it, it disappears. Or you can click on the little cork board right up here very quickly it's back for us. That's It's as simple as that. You want to add a card, a new index card. I double click on the cork board and I've got a new card very quickly added to our board. Uh, we're going to start adding some elements to this board. We're going to go over here to view and we have cork board options. Now we can determine how many cards we want across. Right now we have it on auto fit but let's say we want to make it four cards across. So you can see quite simply um, it's been cut off, but we can move that very easily over like this in order to make it fit in our, our inspector. Or we can make the binder smaller as well to make it all fit on. Very easy to adjust. Um, let's add some pins, our push pins. Let's add um, our stamps and our keyword colors. So we can see all the great things that are going on in the cork board. So here we've got, we've added now our our labels. Um, you can see here the push pins are all diff are different colors and they're different colors based on the label that you've given to that chapter. So here we have made that a chapter which is pink. You can see over here and so therefore your push pin. So it's all visual cues. You can see this one here is blue because I've designated blue as a seam. It's all about visual cues in the cork board. Um, you also can see the stamp. So this card has, is saying it's a to-do, so the to-do is stamped. And it's, um, again, you have the option of turning any of these on or off and actually changing the degree to which they're visual, which we're going to look at in a minute. Um, up top you have a little icon here, which also is another visual cue. So you can see here, it's, uh, it's like little text, and if I just quickly click on it, you can see my story that's behind the cue card in all the text. Now you can see when I click here, I go back to draft because your cork board only shows up when you are when you click on the container, not on the individual files. Only on the container do you see the cork board. And in order to see the inspector, you have to again have to have an individual card clicked on and you will see the inspector to each one of those cards, the metadata to each one of those files. The other thing that we're going to look at here are these little labels along here and these are your keyword labels and somebody asked me about about the keywords and how we could use them quite simply the keywords are like supersized labels their way of tagging your document or information in your document so in family history we could use them to tag um, specific settings so whether that would be a town or a country or a room in a house you can get as specific as you like you can also do it use it to track time periods um, to track a specific ancestor or a surname within your family history um, you can also use it to track your themes so for instance in this particular story I've added a few um, project keywords and uh, you can see them quite simply here I've added a time frame um, specific event, the depression, a specific ancestor, William, and a theme, Canadian. My grandfather was a very proud Canadian, so I want to track the theme in this. And I'll show you quite simply how I've done that. When I've written a story, a chapter about him, I can designate it 
as a keyword right off the bat if I know that story is going to be heavy into, into my particular theme. If you have written it and afterwards you realize that you are, um, it represents a great deal of, of the theme. So for here, you quite simply can show project keywords and uh, click on one and say, I'm going to add that to that particular file because it, so you can add project keywords right here in your cork board. You can also search for them. So let's say I want to see where I've, I have uh, displayed that Canadian theme within my story and uh, you can again go to project keywords and click on Canadian and do a search and it'll bring up every file that you have in which you denoted that you were um, representing that theme in the story. Very simple to keep track of uh, a lot of things that may be going on in your story that uh, you don't want to lose lose track of. That's keywords, sh short and sweet. Um, also, let's take let's go back to our cards here and let's take a look at. Um, we've added a card here, so now, now let's simply. Um, I'm going to show you how we could we can add a title here, and let's just call this um, uh, William return uh, the end of. World War II and click on that and so you can see it easily shares it and I can click on this and I can also add the synopsis here William returns fingers aren't working home from the front lines okay and again I can click up here and it adds my synopsis there the other way that you can add a synopsis, suppose you've already written the story but you want a little summary on your card. Double click on here. This opens up my story. And let's say I want this second chapter to be my synopsis. Highlight it, hit auto generate, and it now drops that chapter into my synopsis. A couple ways there of, of creating that synopsis. Next, um, there's some other ways we can customize these cards. Um, if we go into Tools and to Options, we can customize quite simply through Corkboard here. Um, there's a few other options here we're going to talk about shortly. Um, you can change how you create a new card. Um, I've done it by uh, double clicking on the back board. Um, you can change that so it says nothing or you can open the parent Corkboard. The other way that we can, uh, the other things that we can change is uh, we can change the look of our cards. We can change um, the pin, the push pin to a corner mark. Um, we can change our corkboard pattern to something different. Let's do a custom color. We already have gray in here, so we'll leave it at gray, but you can see that the colors are endless. Um, you can change your status stamp um, to either be brighter or less, less obvious. Let's, let's tone it down a little bit. And, but the index card shadows I want really dark and the tint maybe on an in-between here. So you can hit apply and you can simply see it behind you without exiting out of the uh, options here yet. And let's move on. Let's go back to appearance here and I want to show you some other ways of changing the appearance. Um, not only just the cork board but the whole interface. One of those ways, let's, let's take a look at binder here. We can uh, change the color of our binder. Uh, let's go with this color. This might look totally awful, but just bear with me. And let's change our project notes to an orange. Um, down here you can see index cards. And so within the cork board you can change the colors of the index card dividers, the lines, the, uh, the status stamp color if you'd like. Um, we got it on purple. Let's go something a little lighter and the borders and the backgrounds all are changeable you can also change the fonts so in corkboard specifically you can change the title the text the status stamp again so many so many options to make um, this corkboard reflect your own in personality let's hit apply and ok and you can see now how we've totally changed the look of our corkboard to suit our own specific needs 
You might totally hate this. That's fine. The point is that you're going to be able to make this look however you want to see it look. Um, next, let's add some pictures to these cards. So um, going down here, I'm going to let's look at wedding day. We've got wedding day here. There's a little toggle up here and you'll see this little picture. And by simply adding that picture, we can then I'm going to open up my picture file and I'm going to grab a picture of Mary Allen and Adam's wedding day and I simply drag and drop that into there. And now we have a little inspirational picture here on our cue card. It's strictly on the cue card. It is not on your text. So this is not adding it to the text of your story. It's strictly adding it to the cue card. Um, we'll deal with adding it to the text of the story later. And again, you can toggle back and forth there so that you can um, easily see what um, whether you want to see the synopsis or the picture. You want to get rid of the picture. It's quite simply hit the little X and it's gone. And you can exchange it out for another picture or just leave it empty altogether. Moving the cards around is again very simple. We can quite simply just drag and drop um, simply like that. If you wanted back in tools here in the options, if you want to um, if we go to corkboard options, allowing dropping drag items onto cards. By clicking this, I'll show you what happens. And that is that perhaps here I have this chapter on on Mary Ellen and and her dying. And I had these other scenes and I want them to be part of this chapter. I can drag and drop and they will be stacked in here. Okay, quite simply like that. Now, if you do not have that option on, you can still do it. And I don't keep the option on because if I'm dragging and dropping, I don't want to drag and drop by accident, which you can very easily do, I've found. Um, but you can still drag and drop by in through the binder. Okay, so like quite simply, I can take this back out again just by doing that, and it comes back out again. But um, we can add it back in again, quite simply like that. So you can see here, if I click on this, now you can see in this specific file our cards. Um, for the different scenes within that chapter. So what's really nice is that you can come up here to draft and we can see our entire cork board and we can go here to split screen now. Now we have the cork board top and bottom. But if we come down here and click in this spot and then click on this chapter, go to cork board, now you have our primary cork board on top, but our our chapter about Mary Ellen, we have a secondary cork board down here laying out the specific scenes of that cork board. So you've basically created now two different cork boards within one project. I, I find that very cool. Let's just go back to full screen here for a minute. And that's about all the time we are going to have here today. We're coming to the end and there's so much more I want to tell you about, but um, it's going to have to wait for future videos. Um, before I do go, I just want to go over a couple of things. In the last video, I mentioned about printing these cards out. That at the moment is only available if you have the Mac version. It is not available in the Windows version as of yet, although I think there will be upgrades coming very shortly. Um, as well, um, we have coming down the pipe, I have a couple videos I'm working on right now and we're going to look more at the editor and starting to write and we're also going to be doing a big big one on footnotes, endnotes and bibliographies which I know is hugely important um, to family history writers. So keep sending me your questions, I'm getting them, I'll either try to answer them personally or they'll be reflected back when we, we come up with our next uh, webinar. So in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed um, this webinar on um, Scribner for the Family History Writer and look forward to uh, hearing more from you about it. Thank you.